Okay, starter raiders reinstalled. Batteries hooked up. Let's see what happens. Well, we're closer. I'm going to hook up the jumpers because I think that battery is kind of weak. I've been charging it, but I still don't think it's very good. I'm glad I didn't start tearing the tin off of this thing. It's been so long since I worked on this. I've completely forgotten that the points are right here on the side. Not under the tin like a typical flathead engine. Because setting these points also has a relation to the timing on the engine and I'm thinking that's where at least part of my problem is because you may have noticed when I was turning it over when it did try to kick over it kicked back and even after I turned the camera off I kept trying it jumping it with bigger car batteries getting a little more revolution out of it but every time it would kick it kicked back like the timing was off So, I am going to have to read up on the timing procedure on this because I do believe it's kind of convoluted. So, I'll be back.
Well, that's definitely progress. My main issue was in the points and the timing. I cleaned them and I reduced the gap some and it did start. The starter still turns over too slow but if I have both hands and I choke it here I can get it to start on its own until the battery gets weak and then I have to give it some more power via the jump. Um, obviously you see I don't have the cable on the choke and so at high RPMs it bumps it around so I need to address that it's progress but I still may need a new starter on it because that thing just turns over way too slow but it's running the book the manual shows you two ways on timing this uh, one well the timing is all done via the points but there's two ways to set two ways to set the points and one is you put it at top dead center and you set the gap at twenty thousandths and that's supposed to be close enough but the preferred method is a static method where you put the timing marks at top dead center you hook a continuity gauge between the points and the ground and you close the gap completely and then you just open them up until the continuity light goes out you tighten it up and that's good which kind of contradicts the other way because you know that's less than twenty thousandths um, I just eyeballed it because I was right around twenty thousandths and so I just closed it up quite a bit because I can't find my timing mark I'd have to pull the tin off to clean up the flywheel it's too rusty to see the timing mark on it I'll show you where it's supposed to be supposed to look right in this push and cut and the pointer on that is supposed to point at the timing mark but I can't find it so and I just ran it out of the gas so I'll have to put some fuel in it too before I can test it out to make sure it still moves yeah the joys of frozen things when uh, they sit too long. Bowling's had a really stupid brainchild here and that's his axle pin. When you want to freewheel it you pull this pin out and it disengages the axle from the hub and you can push the tractor around. When you want to drive it you gotta push it back in and it locks into a specific register on the hub and you can go. Well, it's froze. This thing's froze up on me before too and I've been able to tap it and spray it loose but not this time. It's not budging. So I'm going to pull the hub and the wheel off and try to drive it all the way out so I can polish it up and clean up the bore some too and put some anti-seize on it. So, more fun. Okay, well this is nice. Got the wheel off, obviously. Looks like somebody at Bullens might have been thinking. So that register where that pin goes into is right there. It goes all the way through the hub. And they even put an indentation on the hub. So there's no interference with getting a pin in there. Or I should say getting a punch in there. And knocking the pin out. So that's going to make this job easier. I don't have to pull the hub apart. Oh, you're kidding. They weren't thinking ahead. Unless I can...
There we go. They should have put a little notch on. Well, I guess, no, that just doesn't matter. You move the register to wherever the axle's at. Okay. All right, I'm gonna go polish that up. Nice fit. Soak that down with some anti-seize. Then, there's a little roll pin that goes right back here that keeps the pin from potentially sliding out and falling off. There, that's perfect. That's a nice find. I'm glad that, glad about that. All right, I'm going to get the wheel back on, put some gas in it, and if it starts up again, we'll take a little drive across the, the small yard here. Well, it's looking promising. It moves, it stops, brakes are working. All the gears are working. I'll need to run that choke cable, check all the uh, gear oils, and run through the lube points, but it's looking good. So, I think that's gonna wrap this up. If I have any other additions to it, I'll make another video, but it runs, it moves, it's going to do what it needs to do. So thanks for watching.